the record. So what are we going to do? What do we all want to do with uh, the balance of the bill? Your Honor, I've, uh, I have my rebuttal case is two more witnesses. One witness, I, I think the directs for each um, can be done under 30 minutes each. We could even finish today. We could go all the way to the end. Um, That's there. on <laughs> the length of the cross and whatever serve rebuttal we may see. <laughs> I, I'm more than happy to push through. I mean, I got nowhere to go but back to live yeah. up in a hotel room. Owen's <laughs> <laughs> well, brought up this idea, though, that we went to like 7 o'clock and we didn't finish, and so it just made it the next day a lot worse. <laughs> but, uh, it sounds like we might be able to get there. So back on the record. <clears throat> call your next witness, please. All right, call Marty Bass. Who's your current employer? Spectre Energy. What is your current title and position? Uh, construction project manager for Sable Trail Transmission. And what is your current responsibilities and duties? I perform oversight of the EPCM contractor uh, to ensure their adherence to our specifications and models. And what does EPCM stand for? Engineering, Procurement, Construction Management. Can you please describe your role in the Sable Trail Pipeline project? I uh, oversee the EPCM, the people that uh, work for us, design the pipeline, make sure they hear our specifications and that our models are previously stated. Have you previously been involved in the construction and operation of other linear facility projects? Yes, sir. Have you specifically worked on pipeline projects? Yes. How many greenfield projects have you worked on? Uh, four. I want you to refer to tab 10 of your binder which is Sable Trail Exhibit 10, which has already been entered into evidence. Is this a current and accurate copy of your resume? Yes, I would like to make one correction, though, which is my new, I noticed the phone number is incorrect. It should be 9730, not 9703. And could you summarize your post-secondary education? I have a degree of, from uh, construction management from the University of Louisiana Monroe. Would you please summarize your employment history relevant to this proceeding? Once I graduated and achieved my Bachelor of Science, I went directly to work in the uh, pipeline construction industry in 2001, uh, working on various uh, projects from green fields to uh, bolt-on projects to uh, DOT compliance projects. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer Mr. Bass as an expert in the field of pipeline construction management. Any objection? I have to take two more here to witness, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bass, what did you say your post? Um, your education beyond the Bachelor's of Science degree was? That was my education. And you worked on four Greenfield projects? That is, yes, sir, four for Greenfield, yes. And they were all pipeline projects? Yes. Were they all for Sable, or rather all for um, Spectra Energy? Yes. Well, I would suggest, Your Honor, that the, the gentleman with his bachelor's degree is, a, is an employee of the uh, respondent, not necessarily qualify as a uh, as an expert, uh, with a bachelor's degree and minimal uh, experience. That goes to wait. Except that as an expert. Let's get this out of the way. What's the di diameter of the proposed pipeline? <clears throat> Thirty-six inch OD, which is outside Amber, and twenty-four inch OD, which is outside Amber. And the 24 inch is for what pipeline? It's for the Citrus County lateral. And the other, the 36 is for? It's, they will, it's for the main line rail, they will go transmission, and also the Hunter Street lateral. How thick is the pipe? It depends on what class location you're in. You've got class one, two, and three. Class one pipe is 
uh, 500 wall, which equates to a half inch. Then you have 625 wall for class two, and then 750 wall for class three, which is three quarters of an inch. So it ranges from 500 to three, or half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Does the thickness of the pipe have anything to do with the width of the right of way? It, it, oh well, for the, it relates to the construction technique and the amount of construction, or the, how big the construction equipment is that need to handle that size of pipe. So it does equate to it from that perspective. And let's get into that. Can you describe the right of way required for the operation and maintenance of the pipeline? 50 feet. <coughs> is that a permanent or temporary easement? That's for the operation and maintenance. Disabled Troy require both temporary and permanent easements for the construction of the pipeline? Yes. Can you explain the difference? Permanent easement is just, like you said, is needed for the operation of the pipeline during the life of the uh, pipeline. Uh, the additional 50 feet is needed for the construction to allow the equipment and the pipe to be installed safely during construction on it. Is the width of the uh, right-of-way the same for uplands and wetlands? No, it is not. Can you explain the difference? Uh, in wetlands, uh, we reduce about 25 feet to a total of 75 feet to reduce impacts to the wetlands. Is the width for a temporary right of way the same for uplands and wetlands? No. And can you explain the difference? Uh, that's, that's temporary. Maybe I misunderstood your first question. What you asked is the permanent easement for the first question the same in upland? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Let me make a correction. Tem permanent easement is the same in construction in the upland and uh, wetland areas. Which is 50 feet. Yes, 50 feet. Sorry for the confusion. And is additional temporary right of way required for construction? Yes. And is there a difference in that width based on whether it's in uplands or wetlands? Yes. It is reduced by 25 feet in wetlands from the uplands. What is additional temporary workspace? Additional temporary workspace is an addition to the permanent uh, easement and the construction workspace when there is a change in construction technique. Is there a typical size for the temporary workspace? We do utilize uh, typicals, but there are uh, cases where you have it on the workspace depending on the feature of yeah. Were you involved in the selection of the proposed route? Yes. Can you explain how you were involved? At the very beginning, we obviously had a, a uh, receipt point, a delivery point that we had to go to. And along between those two points, we evaluated environmental fa factors, cultural factors, uh, paralleling the highways <coughs> to reduce impacts, uh, parks, you know, all sorts of information that matter. Did you take, uh, did, did Sable Child take into consideration uh, impacts to environmentally sensitive areas? Yes. And can you explain how you, Sable Child took that into consideration? Once the route was developed uh, on paper, we brought in experts such as uh, environmental scientists, archaeologists to review the route up front to uh, look at weather impacts, see if they could be adjusted. And once we got into the field, we further refined that by what we actually found in the field. And when was the original route proposed? April of 2013. Since then, has the route been modified from its original proposal? Yes. Can you generally describe the reasons why the route has been modified? Environmental factors, uh, reducing impact, impacts to wetlands, uh, parking sites, which I've heard talked about before, we either avoided, landowner requests, uh, avoiding future developments once we were talking to landowners to either you know, avoid the developments are remaining within the property to help minimize impacts to their property. Can you talk about, did you attempt to avoid archaeological sites? Yes. We've been talking about two reroutes for the last several days, and I think you would all benefit from better understanding what those reroutes are. First one I want to talk about is the Witlacuche reroute. And if you could turn to tab 11, which is Sable Trail Exhibit 11, which is already been entered into evidence. And a blow up of it is over your left shoulder to the extent that's helpful. Can you describe generally what this reroute is? This reroute, as you know, previously heard in this hearing, was to uh, was, uh, it was along the existing transmission corridor, and uh, they, 
uh, concerns raised by residents, by stakeholders of our crossing. And once we were in there to do our geotechnical uh, investigations, we deemed too that this was not the appropriate place to cross. So we worked with other stakeholders, landowners, to come up with a route and uh, come up with a current route crossing of the Suwannee River that we're at, eliminating the Wichita River crossing at that location. If you turn to Sable Trail Exhibit 12, which is tab 12, which has already been entered into evidence, the law is over your left shoulder to the extent it's helpful. Can you explain why Sable Trail did the Gilcrest West reroute? The, it's sort of the same issues uh, with, uh, with Lacucci, uh, except we never got to the point of doing the geotechnical uh, investigation at the Itchitutney River. But once we started having open houses and public meetings, uh, stakeholders were very concerned about the crossing that you took me. It was spring fed and also some uh, going through tight residential areas. So we decided to make the reroute paralleling an existing Florida gas transition transmission system where uh, two pipelines have been successfully installed at the Santa Fe River at that crossing. Now these are the two major ones we've discussed. Were there other reroutes yes. in Florida? And can you generally just... How many reroutes have been done? In Florida? Off the top of my head, I would... Just guessing, probably 175 to 200 that are reported. Not not only uh, the ones we did minor adjustments in the field based on what we saw in the field. And can you discuss generally what prompted those reroutes or what types of concerns would prompt those reroutes? It could be physical features such as sinkholes, it could be uh, landowner requests, um, habitat avoidance like we did on Halpata, uh, future developments that were uh, we're following a roadway in, in Florida and they put a, uh, we had plans for a uh, off ramps, so we avoided that. So it's a sub -de uh, developments, it's just a wide array of, of reasons. Thank you, Mario. I have no further questions. No, sir. Yes, Your Honor. that the permanent easements, if I understand correctly, are 50 feet, and then the temporary easements are 25 to 50 additional feet. <coughs> is, is that correct? No, sir. The, no. 50 feet permanent, 50 feet temporary. So the permanent is 50 feet? Yes. And if it's not on a wetland, the temporary is an additional 50 feet? No. Upland areas are just what I described, 50 feet permanent. 50 feet temporary. Wetlands are 50 feet permanent, 25 temporary. So, uh, if I understand correctly, what am I stating when I say 50 feet permanent, 50 feet temporary? That's 100, right? Yes. During the temporary time? Yes. Okay. So, the 50 feet that is uh, temporary, how long is that temporary period estimated to be for the proposed pipeline? Uh, to the duration of construction. Okay, what's the estimate uh, of that? Nine months. So it's estimated that uh, within nine months that pipeline will be installed in its entirety or in yes. sections? In, in its entirety, in sections. Thank you. Um, is that uh, exceptionally fast or is that normal? It's normal. Mm -hmm. uh, how many times is a pipe order tested before it's put into use? It's the mainline test. You have pre-tests for drills, which you weld the pipe up and you test that before you pull it down the river. Uh, you have pre-tests such as that for road crossings and then you have mainline tests and the mainline tests are only one time. Are they uh, tested after they're put into use, the pipeline? Pressure tested? Yes. Uh, 
Bayer, it, it is some, you have to, I don't know if we can get into safety and stuff, but according to FEMSA, you have to test the integrity of that pipeline after it's in service every so many years. You can either do that by inline inspection tools, which is not pressure testing, or you can rehydro the line. To rehydro the line, does it require shutting down the service? Yes. Is that typically done? No, we typically opt for uh, inline inspection tools to keep from uh, shutting the line down. So a, a pipeline such as this proposed Sable Creel pipeline, uh, do you know how many times uh, per year or how many years apart those tests are required? I don't know the exact date, but our exact years, but it's, I believe it's five to six years. So would it be correct then to, uh, based on the estimation, that after the pipe is in, pipeline is installed, it may not be pressure tested for that particular purpose for maybe up to five years? Yes. Would the safety risks be lessened if the pipe were, say, 30 inch in diameter rather than 36? Objection. Now we're getting into safety. It's the purview of the federal government. I was, I was going to say I'm not referring to government safety. Just All just safety is government. It's controlled by the federal DOT. Would the investigation the, the uh, would the rerouting be affected if the size of the pipe was uh, rerouting that was uh, demonstrated in Exhibit 12? Be um, any different if the pipe was smaller in diameter? Objection. No. This is a permit for a 36 inch pipe. There's been no foundation for smaller pipes. This is the only one being reviewed. I'm, I'm sorry. This is the only one being reviewed. It doesn't matter whether another one would be safer. It's just that actually we're not looking at safety. It's only the impacts of this proposal that you want You referenced um, some of the rewriting based on landowner requests. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Can you uh, identify any one or two of those requests? We've had requests to, I mean, there's tons of them, um, by specific, by name, and Florida and Solani, we've had reroutes on property owners to, in order to, buy, to keep from bisecting their property development plans, we've rerouted on property lines. Uh, we've rerouted uh, to avoid gum slough, to parallel existing right away to reduce impacts. Uh, and that was suggested by a landowner. Uh, several under street line development going on down there, we rerouted that landowner request. And you stated that 175 to 200 reroutes per year is, would be uh, common in your experience? Objection, Your Honor. I this characterizes testimony that there was no per year. Well, he's asking if that's correct. Is that correct? So it's not. Was your prior testimony that? And uh, you experienced 175 to 200 reroutes in Florida based on uh, uh, presentations made on behalf of uh, Spectra Energy? Is that normal? No, was that your testimony? Yes. Okay. So we, would you then say that reroutes are uh, 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 part and parcel of the, uh, of the process to propose and then a reroute? Correct. So it's normal that this reroute was done. This is not, not an abnormal compensation. Would you agree? It's normal to have reroutes in the development phase of a project. And you stated that the Spectra Energy decided to move the pipe uh, to run parallel to Florida Gas's pipe. Is that correct? Okay. Gas pipeline? Correct. Right. Has uh, Florida Gas um, um, made any uh, complaints about that? Objection relevance. About that, uh, Proximity of your pipe to their pipe. Objection relevance. Uh, has Spectra Energy, um, after making the rewrite shown in Exhibit 12, um, was any of those modifications made uh, in response to Florida Gas? And after making these rebound, uh, as shown in Exhibit 12, uh, does that include crossing Florida gas pipeline at points? Yes. 
And do you know how uh, the frequency of that crossing, is there, is there a frequency uh, that you can refer to in terms of miles? Checking your eye relevance to the whole frequency of crossing is unrelated to any of the ERP criteria. You've asked a lot of questions about crossings of other lines, but you never, it's never been established in my mind what you're getting at. Um, if it's beyond safety, uh, which is not something we can take up, I never understood what, what exactly you're trying to suggest. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Bass, when one pipeline crosses another, does that require the drilling to go deeper than it would if there were not another <coughs> pipeline present? Um, does it require, you're required to go beneath the pipeline. Okay. Are there instances where uh, Sutra Energy's pipeline goes beneath rather than above the pipeline that it crosses here and there? What? The first question. The first this question. is where Synergy Energy's pipeline, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Spectra Energy's pipeline crosses Florida, uh, Florida Gas's pipeline. Um, are there instances where it goes below it rather than above it? Yes. And in those instances, does that require a deeper drilling than it would be? We have not said we were drilling. There's no drilling? Is, is there horizontal um, drilling? No. There's no drilling at all? Not of the Florida gas crossing. Okay, how is, uh, is that, is that, and why is that? Because we will be open cutting those crossings. Everywhere, if I understand correctly, I'm just trying to understand, is that everywhere where Spectra Energy's pipeline crosses Florida gas pipeline, is it exposed, so already above ground? No. Then how is it that um, there's no drilling required to do so? Construction technique of crossing a board and pipeline, which we call open cutting, would be trenching and placing the pipe, open trenching and placing the pipe beneath the existing pipeline. Could you explain, please, open trenching? Open trenching. How do you spell that, sir? Trench. I'm sorry, oh, I, open got an, I got an accent, but that's the word. <laughs> open trenching? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, can you explain what that means, please? That is a mechanical means to remove the dirt to a party trench using an excavator to install the pipeline, our pipeline, under an existing pipeline. Uh, that would cost much less to do than drilling. Is that not true? Yeah, it, on relevance. What, what difference does it make what it costs? in terms of the ERP criteria. Nothing further. Are you ready? Let's do There's a question about how long it takes to, to construct this pipeline. Is, is the pipeline constructed all at once, or is it done in spreads? It's done in spreads, and the spread is defined as a certain length along the pipeline that a certain contractor will build. And those six spreads will be built sequentially at the same time in order to meet the nine months. Thank you. No further questions. Concurrently, not sequentially. Concurrently. How's that? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a construction term of art. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Thank you, sir.